Hello, my name is Ryan, and my group members are Peter and Kyle, and uh, the topic we are doing our presentation on is facial recognition, so let's get started. So the problem at hand with facial recognition is facial recognition is being used on the public without them knowing. That's happening in many ways between police, between just companies using it, and it just being out in general. Facial recognition is being abused by the government, which I just stated before, is a big issue that comes at hand with facial recognition being used. Not knowing when a person is being scanned by this technology. So what happens is the public will be, this technology will be used on them and they will have no recollection of it happening. They'll never know what happened. No one's going to tell them what happened. It just happens and it's very unfortunate that it has to play out where they have no clue it's being scanned. So that's, uh, those are some of the major problems that comes with this type of technology being used. So the product that we all came up with, it's actually an app that can be installed right onto your computer or smartphone. And the wonderful thing about it is it can detect any time you are scanned by facial recognition. Amazing, right? And whenever you want, you could just click a button on the app and boom, the app will tell you how many times you have been scanned throughout your day. So if you want to walk down a certain path to work, say you work in like the city, you want to walk to work, and you want to make sure you're not getting scanned the most, you can check your app when you get to work and see how many times your face was scanned. You can change your route depending on it. So it's a very neat little app if you want to see how many times you're being scanned throughout the day, if you want to change your route, if you want to, or just know in general if you're being scanned to know that your face is being scanned out or your pictures are being taken of you by God knows who, but you know, just in case you want to actually know, there will be an app just for you to know that you are being scanned. So great app. <laughs> so one question, the main question, there's actually two parts of this question that can come with this type of technology is what are all the different ways facial recognition is being used? So in what ways is this type of technology being used on the public? And the second part is, and how can people find out about the use of this technology? So the technology is being used on them in multiple different ways, but how can they actually find out how this technology is being used and when it's being used and how can they be more informed about this technology and how it works and when it's being used. That is the main question that has two parts to it that can be answered in with this presentation. So one way you can answer this question is inform the public about facial recognition. There's this article by Kate Crawford which discusses the issues with facial recognition in public spaces. She is saying that it's not ready to be put into the public spaces because it's not been deployed and it's not being used regularly to the extent that would per would allow it to be used in public spaces. It is being kept in secret if it's being used, so the public is not aware about it. Even the police force is not using the facial recognition on their body cams because it was actually made illegal because the technology was not reliable enough to be used on the public. It was, it was not capable of getting rid of the biases based on skin color, based on other factors. It was not capable of not distinguishing those and reporting as criminal activity when it came to police work. So that was banned. They made it illegal to use facial recognition on the body cams. And... The main part, the main point of this article by Kate Crawford is to emphasize how this technology, if it is to be used on the public, needs to have, and she quoted this, a strong legal safeguards that guarantee civil rights, fairness, and accountability. So if it does not have those, if it does not have that, what she quoted, it's, it's not work, it's not going to be good for the public. They're not going to know, it's not going to be fair, and all in all, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a great time. Thank you. To move on, my name is Peter, and I have provided two sources for you guys to help help you better understand our question. So in this article by Joe McGee, who's tracking you in public, he talks about facial recognition and how it is used in high-end stores and vendors. In a retail world, facial recognition works as a security system. Security cameras feed videos to computers that take measurements and use algorithms to encode the data provided within the face that's recognized in the scan. These scans, however, can alert a salesperson or security guard of individuals who have been convicted with shoplifting before and is spotted in their store. Facial recognition is unregulated and there are no laws that stop them from using it. 
Regardless of whether you want to be recognized, you can be sure that you have no right of refusal in public, nor in the myriad of private spaces that you enter on a daily basis that are owned by someone other than yourself. Gates says, you give consent by entering the establishment. However, privacy advocates brought up the idea of policy changes that stakeholders at the NTIA, National Telecommunications and Information Administration, is already advancing in, which is an opt-in before people are entered into facial recognition. Meaning, they, have, they get to give consent whether they are allowed to have their face scanned before entering in. However, the main point of this article is to address the reason why companies and security force tasks uses facial recognition and it is ultimately to protect everyone and their companies. Moving on to the next source. And this source um, from the NBC News by John Scapi, his article, Facial Recognition Gives Police a Powerful New Tracking Tool, is also raising alarms. So in this, in this article, he talks about how police authorities use this facial, facial recognition to find people who have committed crimes and sometimes they are successful and sometimes they are not. Meaning, they could get the, they could capture the right person or they could mistakenly capture the wrong person. So, a great way to help and prevent potential crimes from occurring is by facial recognition. And in this article, they explain that. But, however, it's also raising alarms of the risk of mistakes and abuse. People with darker skin tones may run into some facial recognition algorithms that struggles to manage faces of others, and if places do find their face, there's simply no way that the face recognition software will be not used to harm citizens. The only way for individuals to find out that their face is being used in this case is when they are mistakenly, is when they are mistakenly recognized by facial recognition algorithms. The main point of this article is to inform us how facial recognition algorithms can help to protect the protect the public, but it could also harm us. It could protect us by facial scans running through security cameras, spotting and finding faces that are of a threat, and it could also harm us by facial recognition algorithms wrongfully scanning a person's face and matching them to the identity of a criminal, which brings up a big question to re the reliability of facial scans and how it's supposed to protect the public. But since developers and products are not perfect, the scans won't be perfect and it will ultimately frame someone else as a criminal rather than a real person themselves. All right, so for the first article I decided to talk about is an article from Richard Reeves. According to this article, he explains about how facial recognition could cause a positive impact in the future and could really help out society. Facial recognition can cause a very huge impact on security. For example, one example that Reeves talked about was knife crime. Throughout the years, knife crime been increasing and innocent people are being hurt because of it and they're being sent to the hospital because of this crime. For facial recognition, it could immediately catch the person that has a knife or have a sharp object underneath their clothes, and the police could immediately arrest that person that have the sharp object inside their clothes. According to Rich, he said that police cannot stop and search an ind individual that's, um, that suspect to be carrying drugs or weapons or both, or they can stop and search a person in a location where they, are, have, where they have a object, and, or they could catch the person that's like doing a serious violent crime. And another thing Reeves talked about was crime investigation. According to Reeves, he said that these systems can memorize the faces of persons or a, a person's interests. Networks of gang members wanted to wanted criminals and those suspects of involvement in serious violent crime. Furthermore, these systems don't need prior personal engagement to recognize individual and see only data not gender age or race face recognition could also be utilized for airport security according to reeves he said facial recognition technology managed to catch an imposter trying to enter the u.s at the washington dose airport the false passport may have been uncaught by the human eye yeah due to the accuracy of the facial recognition technology it managed to help officers catch the imposter and bring him to justice so basically, Reeves is just saying that, you know, using a facial recognition, like, it could definitely, definitely, definitely help out with air airport security and also just make things very easy for the staff. So the second article I decided to talk about was an article from Kate Bagley, and her article is called How Facial Recognition Systems Will Reshape Your Daily Life. So basically, 
This article was way back in 2017. It's like when the new iPhone came out and you had to use facial recognition in order to open out your phone and etc. And basically, Kate was basically saying how facial recognition systems could stop criminals off the streets and it could basically just make things automatic for people. And people don't really have to manually plug their information in or like, you know, put all their personal information by like using whatever type of technology that, that's around. All it has to do is just like show their face and boom, it works. They have automatically have access. And according to Kate, she said facial recognition technology is coming of age. The new iPhone can be unlocked simply by looking at it and accessing your smartphone it's just one of my many ways that facial recognition will change over, I mean, change our daily lives. So we'll be using our faces to pay for groceries, catch trains, pass through airports, security, and more. So basically, Kate is saying that, you know, facial recognition is definitely about to happen in the future. Because nowadays, you know... They're, I think like companies, they just plan to use facial recognitions in order to, um, you know, let people use trains or like collect groceries and stuff. It just make things very efficient and very easy for everybody. And another uh, thing that Kate has said was that experts says facial recognition systems can be extremely reliable. Even Apple said that. Apple claims its new iPhone has no trouble telling a real face from a photo. And can even recognize individuals if they grow a beard or done eyeglasses. Um, and researchers in the UK and India have developed a system that they say can peer through disguises. Uh, I mean disguises, including fake beards and scars that obscure part of the face. It uses 14 key landmarks around the eyes, nose, and lips. If some features are hidden, it uses others to make the identification. So basically, it doesn't matter if you put yourself in disguise; like it's not going, it's not going to work at all. So basically, she's just saying how, you know, facial recognition is like a definite must that we need to have in the future.